just like us at Rising, Elon Musk is having all sorts of fun with the elite gathering for the World Economic Forum. He tweeted this poll. Should the World Economic Forum control the world with about 2 million votes in, 86% said no, <laughs> roughly 14% said yes. You know, there's always there's always going to be trolls on Twitter. Trolls stay trolling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was this was shortly before the Tesla CEO blasted the forum as quote and it's increasingly becoming an elected an elected world government that the people never asked for and don't want. Right. It, it's not it's I mean the, some of the people there are elected on behalf of their own sure governments but they're not elected to run everything else. Yeah, Kirsten Cinema's there, high-fiving Joe Manchin. It's a big party. Yeah. You're just Oh, you must have been invited. delighted to see that. It was the highlight of my week. Very happy. <laughs> oh, there was a Fox News is Tucker Carlson. He says the World Economic Forum exists to destroy national economies. Let's watch that. And, and this is our new favorite, the so-called World Economic Forum seems to exist to destroy national economies. Not an overstatement. It was the WEF, keep in mind, that told the government of Sri Lanka to give up modern fertilizer. Oh, good plan, guys. Go ahead and try it. Result? The country collapsed and people starved. Then it was the WEF that promoted Sam Bankman-Fried's historic Ponzi, the biggest financial fraud in history, Apparently, the savants at the World Economic Forum just couldn't tell that this twitchy, pill-popping kid in cargo shorts, who literally played video games during interviews, was an utterly transparent scammer. They had no idea. They thought he was a genius, just like them. And, of course, it was the WEF that predicted the COVID lockdowns would, quote, quietly improve cities, not turn them into ominous hellscapes of unemployment, drug addiction, and crime. It seemed like a good plan at the time. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's prevent people from working. That'll make them rich. It'll quietly improve life for everyone. That's the World Economic Forum for you. And we talked about yesterday uh, how uh, there was a panel about the existential threat of disinformation hosted by Brian Stelter and featuring Seth Moulton, who's a Democratic congressman and the publisher of the New York Times and a European Union person. And they, uh, they, they really did position disinformation as the central conundrum that mankind must face and that everything else stems from that. Yeah, look, I don't, it, what's so funny about Tucker Carlson's critique there is that it's what the left has been arguing since time immemorial. The whole point of the, the case against neoliberalism the Tucker case against, Carlson, actual leftist. You're going to get in trouble for this. <laughs> I don't know if I said exactly Let's, that. I think Brianna said that. Can, uh, can we? <laughs> but look, it's like the whole point. Of, the, the leftists argue that neoliberalism uses these kind of economic um, carrots and sticks, mostly sticks, to bully, particularly the global, global South, but all kinds of world economies, into playing by this corporatist, elite-driven financial game that mm -hmm. benefits. Elites. So the idea that that these these big multinational organizations.